This is Snowface Bigfoot, and welcome to my Blonde Dove in the Pinball Arcade's latest update. Big Buck Hunter, which I will play in another video, and Whoa Nelly, Big Juicy Melons. And tonight, this game is sponsored by Keith Jackson, NCAA Football Commentating. Rest in peace, Keith Jackson. Okay, so I'm joking about the Keith Jackson part. Whoa Nelly was, I think, came out in 2012 by Stern Pinball. I know that it's a reskin or actually um, not a reskin, but just basically Continental Cafe by Gottlieb, which I think came out in 1959. And so I guess I'm wrong about the year. It's 2015 that it came out. So I stand corrected on that. The only thing I've really known about this game or seen it has been watching on Pop Up Pinball and uh, Dead Flip with Jack Danger. So that's really the only thing I know about Will Nelly and I've watched it and observed it. Um, I don't even think they've actually produced many units on this. So I'm not too sure. So I'm just here to have some fun tonight. And um, again, this is basically electromechanical pinball with an update and I believe this game was also reskinned a couple years ago no nothing has to do with juicy melons or sexy women and, uh, and one thing I do like about this this would never show up in pinball effects because it has the big juicy melons up there come on you got shorty girl and uh, Daisy Dukes up there with melons right above her boobs anyway let's go ahead and get started and um Again, this is a uh, five ball pinball, just like in the old days. So, I'm gonna play a couple games here, see what it's like. Um, and to be honest, I actually did play a game in this and got about 1200 on it. So, the skill shot I believe is upper on the right hand side, the big flashing shot. Okay, so I lit the red bumper already. Got a bullseye target. <laughs> Hit two goals without even really doing anything. Alright, complete the book off. Well, it looks like almost three fifths of the way to completing um, all my basic goals here. And then after that, you get your wizard goals. Now I know there's recall in here, you can really get a lot of points. I'm not sure how to get the 200 points um, light up up there. Oh, okay. I just lit it up and then went through the end lane and went out again. Okay, so just like any, like a lot of your old games, you get the bumpers or a rollover or anything or your end lane. It'll switch over to another target. All right. 483 on the first ball. I don't believe there's a bonus on here. Okay, I lit everything up. Okay, ball three. Okay, now I'm not sure shooting all those four lanes at the top will do for you. Ooh! What the heck of a save? I want to go out the out lane. Yeah, today's Wednesday anyway. Oh, there's only three balls. Okay, so I got 960 out of that. Yeah, it's been a crazy day so far. Man, I'm going to tell you how crazy it's been. This morning I got up for school, get ready to go to, to work, you know. And as you know, I teach up here in North Dakota. And um, so I got up, roads were, man, they were just like frozen over. So I left work a little bit later than normal because it took me about 10 minutes to defrost my windshield. And because um, it was caked with ice, not even the scraper helped. And uh, 
So I get a call. Of course, I'm not going to answer when I'm sliding on ice. I mean, I was going on at 10 miles an hour. I'm only three blocks from school. And I mean, I was just sliding, you know, halfway across the street and everything. We we have wide streets up here where I live at. And uh, not back where I'm from, where the streets are kind of narrow. And uh, when I get to work, finally I walk in, you know, a few minutes later, 8.05. Oh, sorry, Mr. Tyler, but um, we're starting two hours late today. Yeah, nice going. So we were supposed to get robocalls. I never got the call or anything. A lot of people didn't. You know, I'm not going to say what other transpired because I don't, I don't like to reflect negative about work, but let's just say things were so disorganized this morning. Day went pretty good. It actually turned out to be a nice day, but... You know, it's rare when we get freezing rain up here in North Dakota. Usually when it snows, it snows and it stays. But we've had, uh, we've had like four or five times where it snowed, but it melts again. So we've had a few cold spells, but nothing too bad at all. So it's just been an odd year. I mean, fall's been really odd. And uh, we had snow back in the first or second week of October, and then it got cold, and then it warmed up again. Um, Halloween was really nice. I mean, and what, we had another cold spell, got warm, another cold spell, and then Thanksgiving was beautiful again. Um, and it's beautiful weather again today, aside from the rain that we had and the freezing rain last night. You know, it was about 40 today. So, I mean, can't complain other than the roads this morning. And uh, if you know anything about Williston, um, that's about 70 miles northwest of here. And there's a road that goes up there. Um, it really has no gas stations or anything. And I call it the Highway of Death. And somewhere near Williston, they had a nasty wreck. I don't take that road. There's a, um, another bypass road that goes west of here now that you can take um, that goes through a place called Watford City and um, you know it's it just it's been a weird day but um, in case you didn't know why is that Wilson important that's Phil Jackson's hometown so you know and I've never really had good tidings up there but um you know, that's where Phil Jackson, legendary NBA coach, um, that's where he played ball and graduated high school. There we go. I got all four lights lit up here. But yeah, I, I had to deal with the race ride when I, one time in a travel team tournament with my basketball team. And uh, oh, it's been about five years now. And yeah, we had a race ride. They were trying to fight us, man. Because they got mad because they got beached by a bunch of natives. And uh, we blew them out in the championship game. And even the principal was trying to fight me. I mean, that should tell you something, man. That's, that's how bad it is. I mean... Now, if you're black, Hispanic, Chinese, I mean, they treat you pretty good up there. But, you know, they have a few, with, you know, Native Americans here. And it's just ridiculous how they treat people up there. But, um, you know, other than that, I had that on five balls this morning. So, anyway, you know, that's what I have to say about the situation. You know, I'm going to go out for my basketball players, you know, and, uh, and just, it's crazy. Because the thing that started, it started by somebody on another team that we played who was on from the reservation where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, he was just mad because I had, you know, some better players than he did. And, you know, the, the crazy thing was two of his nephews was on my team. And, uh, of course, I'm not going to make any names or anything, but, you know. If you ever want to see me animated, man, I was going off that day. I mean, I was going crazy. I was just, I mean, I told this one guy off that ran the tournament because he just came screaming at me. The day before, then he tried the same thing again, and it's just like, oh my god, it's crazy. But anyway, back to the game here. Yeah, yeah and I'm gonna look at the rules. As soon as I finish this game, I'm gonna look at the rules and see how they play. Now, if you go down the middle, you only get 10 points. If you get the outlanes, what is that, 50? 
I thought I got a hundred the last time on the out lane. It was a pretty fun game. Got good sound effects. <laughs> Cartoon effects. If you hear anything in the background, that's my heater. That thing is loud. Alright. Let's see if we can get that 200 points there. There we go. I don't think I can backhand this. Let's try a post pass. Ooh! Again, yeah, this is digital pinball. There we go. Another 200. Now remember, this game only goes up to 10,000 points, and then it rolls over. And, uh... Man, I, you know, I didn't really grow up on EMs. I grew up on the early solid states of the 80s, man. Just the loudness of them. And you knew you were doing good, really awesome on the game because it just, the tension got, and the noise got louder and louder and louder and heavier and heavier. Ooh, I don't know how to save that. Ooh! Whoa, Nelly! That was a good save. That wasn't. I wonder what happens if you tilt this if your game ends. And I need to start going for that skill shot up there. Alright, I need... I need a roll, one more lane up there so I can load up all four lights. I'm gonna check on the rules here in just a minute. And I think when they redid this game again, um, this is Continental Cafe, a 1959 Golly pinball. And in this game was actually reskinned again, um, not too long ago, because I remember watching on Dead Flip, you know, about eight months ago. I know it was this year, 1760. All right, let me check the scores here. And so, what's the leaderboard like? Wonder if somebody's got like fifty nine thousand million. Yeah, PC five hundred fifty four thousand. You can't get that without cheating. Uh, fourteen twelve thousand. That sounds more logical. All right. Overall, I know I'm pretty low. Yeah, seven hundred sixty eight. Okay, I'm gonna check the high scores from the board. Hundred thousand. What the Hades? Test, zap, ten, lin, zox. What the hell? Okay, something's not right here. No wonder I couldn't get on the scoreboard. Alright, standard goals. I need to get a skill shot and score 3,000. I should be able to do that. Okay, so here we go. Um, help an option. No, instructions. There we go. Uh, let's see. See what the rollover lanes do. So one great way to build up the score and roll Nelly is to complete the rollover lanes. Complete one of the four rollover lanes scores ten points. Completing the lit rollover lane allow also likes three other playfield switches. If the red if the lit red rollover here is completed, the red pop bumper here, star rollover here, and star rollover here are lit. Same thing for the green. If it's completed. Oh. So those add to your points there. So you notice it lights a lot of things on here. So it seems like you have actually a lot of scoring options to be an Eno. And this is from the top lanes up there. Okay, Melon Sisters. Yeah, 200 points per shot. Now I remember watching uh, Jack Danger flip the score, I think. If it wasn't, it was pretty close. I know he had like 9,000 on this. I mean, he was just destroying this game right here. Okay, miscellaneous scoring. 
flank shots, one point. One point each, sunny bumpers five, left in lane, okay. 50 points. Santa drains a rip off. All right, and what's the skill shot here? Okay, all right, let's get back to the game here. So I'll play a few more games. Uh, no? I thought this was a five ball game. Okay, so maybe I'm losing it. No, because normally they would give you the option of three or five balls here. Anyway, I'll tell you what I like about this game right here. You will not find this on pinball effects. <laughs> try to hit that it's the skill shots on on digital pinball is so hard I mean I just barely pulled back on it and I, mean, I got a strong plunge there alright got the yeah I was wondering if I could Backhand that 200 shot there. Alright. What about them big boys? And you can't have a Daisy Duke without the generally tooting its horn. I like how the flippers are really small like the old pinball machines too. Alright. There we go. And unlike Pembot, actually that, that shot up there seems pretty secure. So you can hit it a little bit harder than normal. I think one thing about old electromechanical pinballs or EMs, um, you know, one thing that's really important is how hard you, you hit with the flipper. Um, you know, you want to, some games especially you have lower targets on a, about halfway up the play field. You want to generally hit the pinball because if you don't, you're gonna you're gonna basically ram it or uh, you basically gonna buckshot off of it so all right you're gonna get a rebound shot that's not very friendly how did you get three of those or one But it's really important in old EMs, and, you know, the speed of how you hit the ball because, you know, some of your, again, some of your little EMs, um, they had um, drop targets on a lower, about halfway up the play field, and if you hit the ball too hard, you know, it's going to rebound and go right back down the middle, or it's going to hit the out lanes. I mean, same thing in modern pinball, but, you know, you some shots you have to be really gentle with, and... The speed and, and the strength of your flip, I mean, is so important in these types of games right here. Alright, might be able to break 2,000 this game. Okay. Alright, I beat one of my friends.
I beat myself. All right, I broke 2,000. I want to eventually get 3,000. Oh, I got to remember to go for the skill shot there. One thing that's not easier in digital pinball are skill shots. Pinball was probably one of the few games where the skill shot is not too difficult. And I don't mean games like, you know, Attack from Mars or Medieval Madness where you can pretty much control the lands for the skill shot. I mean, an actual skill shot. Not too bad. That's way better than the last game. 2,401 points. Tell your friends where the good melons are. I don't think I'm going to break my own scoreboard here. Or leaderboard. Man, I'm just all over the place today. I'm tired. I got four and a half hours of sleep last night. Okay, let's go for 3,000. Okay, city boy. Let's all right. Yeah, and I'll give you another example of, you know, why speed's important and how you, you know, use your flippers and EMs. Um, and again, I'm going to go back to when I played Wizard this summer, uh, back in Richmond in a few tournaments. I mean, I got beaten in a lot of other games, but I pretty much destroyed everyone in that, you know. Both games that I played in, in tournament, um... I mean, I won by at least 70 or 80,000 points, so, I mean, it wasn't even close. Um, if you ever played Wizard, it's basically, it's a one-shot game, you, and you have to shoot from the right flipper, and basically what you want to do, there's a saucer on top of the field, at top of the play field that you want to hit. And, um, and when you hit that, it advances your bonus 3,000. And, um, and then on the right-hand side, there are four flags. And, um, you know, there are various switches that and targets that you want to hit on the play field to so knock those down. And if I remember, I forgot how it goes, but I think once you light up all four flags, um, you, you get a double bonus. And you can get up to a, a 38 or 39,000 bonus on there, which, if you know anything about Wizard, um, that's pretty big. Because the game technically rolls over at 200,000 because it has one of those 100,000 lights on the plate, on the um, display. You know, but, you know, but when you're shooting on the, from the left hand slide or the left flipper, you have to shoot it real soft because the ball will rebound right back to you if you shoot it too hard. And um, now if you time from a left flipper, you can actually hit that left orbit just right. And you can actually get back up to the sauce on top of the play field. And again, that's important because that's where all your bonus is. You get 3,000 points every time you hit the sauce on top of the play field. Plus you can get an extra ball up there. Now, in tournament play, we had to plunge the extra ball, if I remember correctly, on that one. But, you know, I just completely destroyed everyone on that. Of course, I got destroyed in some other games, you know, especially the more modern ones. Um, you know, like Tron. I mean, I did pretty good on it, but, again, I was playing the top two players in Richmond. Uh, what was it? Kevin and uh, Malik. So, and they're, they're pretty damn good players. Alright, here we go. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> one of my buddies, his name's Avery, you know, I picked up him up as a friend out at Richmond Pinball, and uh, you know, he always cracks jokes about me not wanting to play Wizard because, you know, he's a, if you play Michael, don't pick Wizard because he's going to blow you out on it. And uh, that's pretty true. <laughs> I can't brag about too many other games, but yeah, most EMs I'm still pretty good at. And uh, and especially a lot of the um, 
you know, solid state games. That's what I grew up on, a solid state game, and that's why I'm good at them. Um, you know, everything from like high speed, you know, firepower, um, Harlem Globetrotters, and uh, I got a story about Harlem Globetrotters I'll tell in a few minutes, but you know, a lot of those games from the 70s and 80s, just, I love them. And of course, I learned how to play on Black Knight. That's the first game I actually remember playing. And I was like eight years old when I came out. I was in third grade and they had it at 7 Eleven. Got a little bit too fancy there. Anyway, and uh, now I actually didn't get to play um, Harlem Go Drives Globe Trotters until 1987. And um, anyway, what happened was um, I was playing at the 7 Eleven at Terminal Avenue on Jeff Davis in Richmond. Not a good neighborhood, because right diagonally across from it is the biggest prostitution ring, or one of the and, and the cheapest and the skankiest in um, South South Richmond. And uh, anyway, ooh, what are you doing up there? Well, that's because where I lived at. Anyway, um, there's these two kids in there, and man, it you know we're playing, and then they. Then they decided they want to get, you know, joking around. Now, again, this is when I was 15. And they were like 13, so 12, 13. Because I know they were in middle school, but, you know, not high school. Anyway, what happened was um, they decided to play, you know, old games with me and went on pulling, tried to pull my pants down, and they got it a couple times. You um, know, the third time it didn't work. Because the third time I knew, you know, I caught him doing it. And what happened was, I was in the middle of my first ball. And when the kid pulled my pants down, I tried to, didn't work. I mule kicked him so damn hard, he started crying. And so the woman behind the counter, which was, the counter's right beside the little, the game room. So she comes in there, and she says, what the hell happened in here? Just like that. What the hell happened in here? And I told her what happened. I said, this kid tried to pull down my pants while I was kicking, so I mule kicked him. You know, and she just laughed her ass. She laughed so hard, and she was like, embarrassing. And, you know, I just like going around saying that. And, uh, oh, my God, it was so funny. But anyway, to finish the story off, um, not only, you know, no, actually, he did pull my pants down. That's right, he did. Um, not, not my underwear, thank God, because, you know, I'm not going to go that far, but, but, anyway, um, I mule kicked him for it, and I pulled my pants up while I was still playing on my first ball, and, uh, <laughs> you know, the crazy thing was, I was, when I got the ball down to one of the flippers, I held the flipper down while I pulled I was pulling the, you know, helping pull my pants out. So, while I was playing and holding one of the flippers. So, that's one of my favorite pinball stories. Oh, yeah, and I scored, I flipped the, I actually rolled the score almost on that game. I think I finished with like 800,000. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wish I could lie about that one. But I can't. That's one of the craziest games and... There's a lot of fond memories of playing pinball and arcade games at 7-Eleven. And I loved that 7-Eleven because he had Bosconian. Um, that was one of my favorite games. And the only other place they had it was Chuck E. Cheese on uh, Melothian Turnpike in Richmond back in the day. And, uh, you know, Bosconian was kind of... It was a scroller that was a cross between Galaga and... I don't know about Asteroid, but... It was just a weird game. Oh my god, that sucked. I only get an hour here to be able to record, so I'm going to cut it off after maybe the next game. And, uh... Call it a video. And then, anyway, um, I got my camera. 
And um, I'm waiting on my graphics card. I think I, what was it? I think I got an Elgato. So I'm gonna do an unboxing video of my um, PlayStation and you know my two uh, classic consoles and my camera. So I'm gonna be working on that pretty soon. I haven't been nudging too much here. I think after this game, I'm gonna nudge it, try to tilt it, and see if it ends the game or just a ball. You know, this game is missing an outhouse. That's when it's missing. I need to hit that two hundred dollar, two hundred point target there. Oh my god, all around it. This game plays really good. Oh, all right. Let's see if I can hit it up there. I waited too late to flip it. I think you can backhand it up there pretty easily. And again, I always keep forgetting to go for the skill shot. I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption lately, so I haven't been playing a lot of pinball. Um, actually, I've played a few games in the last few days on pinball effects. And uh, I'm really enjoying it now. I'm glad that they're bringing out um, Attack from Mars on there, because... That's one of my top pin, five favorite pinball games. All right, did I hit the 200 point target there? All right, let's see if I can get this in a drip. Oh my God, that was poor. All right. Come on, give me a cat call. I tell you what, that 200 points is a lot. I need to hit that. Oh. Speak and ye shall receive. sound effects. This is a really good game here. It's simple. I wouldn't buy this. I wouldn't have it in my home because it's a little bit too simple. But it's fun to play like in, I think, in a um, maybe in a bar or an arcade or something. Ah! 2500 that's not too bad. Alright, I'm going to get one more game of this. Gee, no face. Why don't you go for the skill shot up there? Ooh. There we go. Only got 50 out of it. I'm not sure how to get the 200 then. I thought I was getting 50 out of it. Oh man, that was awful. get into the 
saucer up there. Wow, that was awful. Triple A. Yeah, I didn't say I didn't try to tilt it like I said I was. I didn't need to get that green inlay up there. 1,000 even. All right. Bye -bye now. I'm all over the board today. All right, let's try to tilt. See what happens. Still going. <laughs> All right. Holy cow. There we go. Nope. Okay. So. All right. One more game. Okay, let's go for the skill shot. That's a very tough shot up there. It's so hard on controller to hit a skill shot like that. This is when the actual pinball is a lot easier. I know, because I play a lot. Duh. No. Okay. Yeah, that's a tough shot to hit. Alright, let's try it again. I don't think I'm gonna get it up there. Wow. <laughs> That's awful. Okay, let's see. Nope. Close. Alright. Let's go up in that hole up there. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> I might actually play one more game after this anyway. Horrible games in a row. Um, okay, this will be officially the last game because I think I'm about to hit over the hour mark here. Oh my god. How many times did I say, oh, I'm going to play one more game and end up playing like a bunch more? And then, well, Nelly has that one extra game appeal, that one more game. I don't know. It's, it's kind of like I used to get back in the old days. I just want to try something one more time. Okay. Gosh. And it doesn't help. The analog stick really doesn't help a lot. Almost. Those posts at the bottom big help right now. It's 
some control, get some control. Here we go. Ooh, backhand too. All right. You don't get too many dead bounces on this game. Thousand even, not bad. Warning either. All right, let's see if I can get this fifty points there. There we go. Two hundred and some change. Oh my God, that was dumb. If I just let the ball just. 